Hi, my name is Luis Santos, and I'm an assistant professor at Kent State University. And I'm very glad to present the work that I developed with Inês Quetan, Inês Pereira, and Antonio Leitão, researchers of Inês Quide, Instituto Superior Técnico, based in Lisbon, where we explore the potential of using weaving patterns to shape the daily environment of indoor spaces. The goal of this research was to propose a new generative design system that helps architects design shading systems that are eye performing regarding daylight. The tool should support architects not only to explore the aesthetic value of using weaving patterns in facade design, but also using weaving as a way to shape the daily environment of indoor spaces. The generative design system has three models. The generation model, where the architect uses algorithms to describe the facade system. The analysis model, uh, supported by radiance in day seam, to simulate the daylight performance of the facade system and a search model that entails several optimization algorithms that helps architects optimize the daylight performance of the shading system. The generation model WOW tool helps architects defining different types of weaving patterns as shown in this small video. The architects can also control the number of horizontal stripes. the rotation of the stripes, particularly when they are not weaved. And finally, the width of the stripes. Although our tool was conceived as a daylighting optimization tool, it also supports manual design iteration processes based on a wide range of daylight analysis. The daylight analysis capabilities of the system includes the calculation of climate-based metrics, and point-in-time daylight metrics, such as illuminance and luminance-based simulations. After the implementation of our generative design system, we tested it in a small design problem that consisted of optimizing the daylight performance of two weaved-based architectural screens, one for a large shop window and another for a west-facing window in a typical open-plan office space. This slide presents the geometry of the test model used in the experiments and the optical properties of the surfaces that compose it. The optimization problem has three decision variables, the number of horizontal stripes, the rotation of the south stripes, and the gradient reduction of the west horizontal stripes width, which is controlled by a specific function. The optimization aims to minimize the annual sun exposure and maximize spatial daylight autonomy under the annual clear sky of Phoenix, Arizona. Lead version 4 uses those two daylight metrics in its daylight credit system. Here in this graph, we can see how lead gives different daylight credits based on spatial daylight autonomy and annual sun exposure values. The aim of the optimization was to produce solutions that are outside the gray area. We conduct two optimization runs. In the first optimization, we compare different optimization algorithms to select what would be the most adequate to solve this problem. Here we can see the results for NSGA2, a genetic algorithm for multi-objective optimization. Here we can see the results for OMOPSUM, a particle swarm optimizer for multi-criteria optimization. Finally, we also use a model-based algorithm for multi-criteria optimization that combines Gaussian regression with evolutionary algorithms. NSJ2 and OMOPSUM outperformed the model-based algorithm. They were able to find several solutions that score one credit in the lead daylight credit system and four solutions that score two. For that same reason, we selected NSJ2 and OMOPSUM to be the algorithms for the second optimization run. Here we can see several design solutions of the different Pareto fronts produced by our system. At the bottom, we have the solution that has best, the best annual sun exposure performance, but the worst spatial daylight autonomy performance. While in the top, we see the solution that has the best spatial daylight autonomy performance, but the worst annual sun exposure performance. We also see that NSJ2 was able to produce the solution that better balanced both daylight metrics. After finding the most suitable optimization algorithms to solve this particular problem, 
we implemented an interactive parallel coordinate graph. This visualization helped us to identify the key decision variables as well as redefine the range. The critical decision variables were the number of horizontal stripes and the rotation of the south stripes. This graph shows the results of using NHGA2 in the second optimization run. Compared with the first run, we can see that the algorithm was able to find more solutions that score lead daylight credits. Here are the results of the particle swarm optimizer. As we observe in the first optimization run, the particle swarm was able to produce a Pareto front that is very similar to the one produced by the genetic algorithm. This slide presents several design solutions of the Pareto fronts produced by the genetic algorithm and the particle swarm optimizer. Once more, the genetic algorithm was able to produce the solution that better balances spatial daylight autonomy in annual sun exposure. The solution is marked inside the magenta circle. In conclusion, our tool supports different optimization algorithms allowing architects to perform benchmark tests in order to find the most suitable search procedure to solve a given problem. In our experiments, the genetic algorithm NSG2 and the particle swarm optimizer OMOPSUM outperform a model-based algorithm, thus challenging some recent publishing findings in building performance optimization. The interactive parallel coordinate visualization is an essential tool to further refine the optimization process. This tool allowed us to improve the search for designs that better balance the conflicting objectives set for annual sun exposure and spatial daylight autonomy. Thank you very much for your attention. We are open to questions.